we have our uh, glorious treasure, right? Uh, and we are at the part on the intricacies of the prayer are seventeen, right? So uh, section the intricacies of the prayer are seventeen. The first being the intention. Last we spoke about intention. Number two being the kibrat al ihram, right? The opening statement saying Allahu Akbar, and then we went through that as well, right? And number three is standing in the fourth prayer for those who have the ability to do so. Right, so are we here? Are we at number three? Right, at, uh, for those who have the ability to do so. Right, so as far, I think we've gone through that part, part also, right? And about Fatiha as well. I went through Fatiha with you all. All right. May I go through with you all Fatiha? I went. I went. I should. I should the the ayats, everything, and I highlighted. Oh yes, correct. Okay. Um, ruku and okay for for, for for bowing as well. Right, I went through bowing as well. And then uh, tumakmina. Right, so is number six is tumakmina. Remaining motionless in uh, in rukua, right? and basically every movement in the prayer that is a necessity right, for a person to remain uh, motionless, basically is called tumatmina. Right? It's called tumatmina is wajib. Every part of the prayer is wajib to have tumatmina, and this tumatmina is usually gotten by most people when you do the when you do the, the zikir of that, when you do the zikir of that of that motion, right? So not to think, don't misunderstand and think that. This tumaknina comes after the zikir. No, just to hold the position itself, that is tumaknina. So in doing the zikir right, at that position, that is further, um, uh, uh, further confirming to yourself you have done tumaknina, right? So tumaknina is so is, is is a minimum wajib. So for example, when you ruko, you ruko at that, right? Right. So without saying anything at all, you don't have any zikir whatsoever. You just ruko. You hold it for a, for a pause at a level that, it, that 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 you could say Subhanallah in, and you stand back up, right? Is that counted? Yes, it's counted. Right? But of course, for most of us, we say Subhanallah Rabbiyal, Awwimi wa bihamdi. That makes our tumatnina uh, confirmed. Right? Confirm you had tumatnina at that point, right? So then Atidal, standing up after ruku, right? Uh, so so to stand up after ruku is to step stand up to the level by which you have uh uh by the level by which you can you can stand. Right, so how how you stood for Fatiha, that's how you should stand for Atidal. You must move all the way back up to a straight backbone, right? If uh, and to as far as the person can. So if someone is unable to go to a straight backbone, right? Then uh, as far as they can, Mashallah. Let me see the the, the footnotes here, right? So um, I think I've gone through this part. Right, Fatiha as well, right? Uh, to recite Fatiha is wajib on everyone for every single rakaat. Right, except for the one who is a mazbuk, which I went through, who is a mazbuk. Right, the mazbuk is the one who entered the prayer um, after the imam, right, but he got uh, at least the ruku together with the imam. So for that rakaat, the imam carries his fatiha for him. It means the imam tanggung, right, the imam holds the fatiha for him. Right, so there is no need for him to do the fatiha because he came in at the ruku. Right, so he got he got the rakaat right, uh, with the imam. So if he came in the, the, the if he came to the prayer halfway while the, while Imam was standing, if he began reading Fatiha from Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, right? Uh, when the Imam ruko, he is allowed to stop wherever he's he's reading, and continue with the Imam because he was not there from the beginning. That's why he's he's unable to finish the Fatiha. We went through all of this. Uh, Alhamdulillah, previously then we went through all of this. Right. So the best method uh to raise one sense is Allah Akbar. And we went through the different um, sunnahs of raising the hand as well. Ten sunnahs of raising the hand. Okay, in Atidal, you have to go to the same place as you were before Rukua. Whether one was standing or sitting, it is wajib to intend nothing. Um, it is wajib to intend nothing by this movement except Atidal. Okay, what does this mean? And in fact, it's not just for it's not just for Atidal. For all parts of the prayer. It is wajib for you to only intend. It is wajib for you to only intend that movement. So, for example, for example, if you are in ruku, right? If you are in ruku, right? And uh, like for example, you saw no. Okay, if you are in ruku, right? And you feel like your hijab or whatever you're wearing is sliding up to your neck or is being blown by something. And so you stood back up to keep your hijab down. For example, eh, for you're doing that, right? Your standing up is not for antidal. Your standing up is to fix your hijab. Right? Or, for example, you're in ruko and you saw like a, like a um, like an insect in front of you. For example, so you stood back up out of fear of the insect. Right? So you suddenly, you know, jolting back up is not you wanting to do antidal. 
but it's you trying to avoid what is going on on the floor and the insect is there. So, and then when you're standing, you're like, I'm st- when you're standing, I might as well be in Iatidal. Ah, uh, no, it's not counted. Every movement in the prayer must be intended. Right? So, when you want to go down to Sujo, right? so for example, if you're, if you're standing in Iatidal, and then, um, and then like someone throws a ball, and it's coming in your direction. So, you Sujo, it, you, know, you go right down to the ground. Right? And you're doing so because you're avoiding the ball. Right? You're not doing so because you want to Sujo it. Right, you're just avoiding the ball. So you you you, you bent, right? You you, you 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 duck and you you bent, right? And then um and then you're like, okay, since I'm already bent, I'm gonna switch it. Right? No, right? You have to intend to move on the, the moment you switch. Most people will do that. Like most of us, when we move our prayers, we only intend the movement itself. We don't intend to do anything else with the movement, right? But if la, if that ever happens to you, right, that you go into that movement for some other reason, then it's not valid. You have to go back to the previous position and then do it again. With the intention, so your prayer is not nullified. It's not battle. Right? It's not battle that you if you do it for other reasons. All you have to do is go back to the previous uh, position and redo it with that reason. And 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 and, and don't let this condition be a was was for you. Don't be like, hey, did I do it with the the the, the, the niat or no niat? The niat is basically not something you say in your heart or or anything. It's just that you want to do it, right? So that that counts. So for example, when I'm standing up, and I say, Allah Akbar. And I go into sujud. Straight away, that it is, it is understood that I'm intending by the by the meaning of the word intend, right? by the meaning of the word intend. So it's not a specific niat. I am doing sujud. No, right? It's not. It's not like that. Like it's, it's like the the concept. Like you're, you're, what are you aiming to do? You're aiming to sujud. That's all. Right? So it's just something. It's natural, lah. Most people will have it naturally. Right? So don't have any uh, was was uh, Don't have any whisperings in your in your head. Having any doubts in your prayer after this. Eh? So that's the thing about about fiqh. Okay. As you learn fiqh, right, as you learn fiqh and you learn all the rulings, right, it's supposed to give you more clarity and not more doubt. You're supposed to have more clarity and more, not more doubt. If you are having more doubt, then you uh, then understand that either you're misunderstanding something right, in the fiqh right, or you're being played with shaitan. Right? So fiqh is supposed to bring you to clarity, not doubt in any way. In every raka'at and to intend nothing by sitting in one's movement. Right, so let me let me see in uh number twenty. Okay, in every cup is the tumatnina. Tumatnina, right? Um, what's number twenty? Okay, two sajjas. Wait, two sajjas in every in every rakaat. Right, to do two sajjas in every rakaat. Okay, the conditions of sujud. Right, when you do sujud, right, first and foremost, you have to sujud on the ten bones. Your ten bones are what? No, ten plus seven. Seven bones. Your forehead, your two hands, your two knees, and your two feet. Right, this is what you have to sujud on. Okay, right, so just to draw, right, so if you're su- doing sujud, right, what is wajib, I put it in red, is your forehead. Okay, wajib for it to touch the ground. Okay, the skin of your forehead must touch the, let me put it down. The skin of your forehead must touch the ground. Okay, so the person is praying, right, the person is praying. And there's a nose, okay. And the prayer comes like that. Okay, so the forehead is the one that is compulsory to touch the ground. Okay, then af- thereafter, right, uh, your and then your foot, right? Like this, okay? So the person will be praying like this, alright? Okay, so the hand, the knees, and the feet, the knees orange. It's compulsory for the hand, the knees, and the feet. That means that the, the, the toes, okay, the bottom of your toes, right, it has to be the bottom of your toes. It's compulsory for these things to to be on the ground without it being compulsory for the skin to touch the ground. It's not wajib for the skin of your hands or, of course, not your knees, because this is your aura, right? right and all the skin of your toes. It's not wajib for it to touch the ground. It just has to be on the ground. The only one that is that is wajib to be to be touching the ground, skin to skin to ground, is the forehead. The nose, I, I will use green, the nose is sunnah. Okay, the nose is sunnah. Alright? Um, another wajib is that your weight on your forehead, right, there has to be, you have to rest it. Rest it on the ground. You must rest it on the ground. Why? 
because sometimes people when, 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 they, when they sujo it, right, they, they have their weight on their hands. So their forehead is just grazing the ground. It's not even touch, it's not, it's not, it's not rested on the ground, but it's just touching very lightly on the ground. That's not sah. Right? That, that kind of sujod is not valid. Your forehead must be resting. So much so that if you're praying on sand, right, on soft sand, when you sujod, you should see a mark on the ground, on the sand, like an indentation, whereby your forehead was resting. Your weight, there's some part of your weight on your forehead. Of course, your weight is distributed between your knees, your feet, your hands, and your forehead, right? So, the, so to ensure that you're not holding your forehead up with your hands. So it's possible that you're holding, you're, you're putting your weight on your hands, and your forehead is not rested on the ground. The forehead must be rested on the ground. Okay, another wajib of sujod is that there has to be an incline. Okay? There has to be an incline, right? So the head must be, must be, much, must be, must be lower than the bottom. Right. If the if a person sujuts like this and they bend their knees like this so closely to the ground, right? There is no incline. Okay, there's no incline. If someone does a sujut, they, they, they press themselves all the way to the ground. Right? That is not uh that is that, that is not valid in the Shafi'i Mazhab. In the Hanafi Mazhab, yes. Right? So if you see in the Hanafi Mazhab women doing sujud where they press the whole body to the ground, then it is Hanafi. Right? It's not Shafi'i. Okay? All right. Um. Uh. We may, sitting between the two sujuds. This sitting. Okay. So I understand what is wajib, what is sunnah. This. Okay. For the. Again, I forget. I want to just mention something. What is wajib about the sujud also is your toes. Okay. So what is wrong is when people put their toes like this. You see that? Right. Uh. Put their legs like that. Okay. They, they bend their toes backwards. This is wrong. And this is not counted as sujud. Your toes must be bent forward. It has to be go forward like that. Okay? Um, towards the Qibla. Your hands also towards the Qibla. Right? And then, yeah. Okay, your hands are sunnah. Eh? Sunnah, sunnah. Sunnah, hands under the, sh sh the shoulders. See that? Hands under shoulders. So don't put it so far apart. Don't put it next to your face. Right? But your hands under your shoulders. That is sunnah. Sunnah. Right. Also, the palm of the hand has to be on the ground. So, if someone is holding a mushaf, if you're holding a mushaf and you're praying, ensure somehow or other you can put your mushaf somewhere or hold it up. But the palm of your hand must be on the ground. Even if one one finger is on the ground, it's counted. Even if it's one finger on the ground, it is counted. Okay. Um, remaining motionless, the movement uh, for a moment therein. Sitting between two sides. Okay, sitting between the two sides. Right. What is wajib and what is compulsory that you sit? However you sit, right, that will be whether it's sunnah or not. But as long as you sit, what is the meaning of sitting? Sitting means your bottom is rested. That's all. Your bottom is rested. So even if someone wants to sit cross-legged, and for example, if someone wants to sit cross-legged like that, and on the ground, and then they put their arms there, and they do their atahiyah. Of course, it's not sunnah. Right, but if someone were to do that, if you're a man, eh? Okay. So if a man were to do that, right, right, he's seated like this, and he is cross, he's cross-legged, put his arms, his hands here, cross-legged. Is he sitting uh, valid? Yes, it's valid. If a man sits like this, right, and he um, lets his foot like this, of course, there's no adab in doing that. But if, let's say, he's doing this, his his legs are extended, and he sits in his, in his prayer like that, is it valid? Yes, it's valid. The prayer is valid. Um, but but the sunnah, of course, is not to do this, right? No, this is all. It's valid. Okay, it is sah. It's sah. It's valid, but not sunnah, right? Not sunnah. What is sunnah? As we know, as we all always do, it is a sunnah. Is to sit back on your own thighs. Right, so what is sunnah put in green? Right, so what is wajib that you sit? The sitting part is the wajib part. Right, how you sit makes it sunnah. Right, so what is sunnah in, in this part is that you fold your you fold your legs under yourself. Right? Uh, that kind of sitting. Okay, you fold your legs under your under yourself. Right? This is your your hand. Okay? In that way. 
Okay, you put all this under yourself. Of course, the sunnah is that there are two types of sitting. The first one is called iftirash. Iftirash is when, for example, from from here, if you're looking for the back of the person, the bum is like this, right? One leg is propped up like this, the toes to the front, right? And the other foot is on the bottom. So he's sitting on his foot. Right? This is called iftirash. The, the, the left foot is spread out horizontally under his bottom, sitting on it. The right foot is propped up with the toes towards the kiblat. Right? This is called iftirash. Okay, this one, some people do it very easily. Some people they have a lot of trouble doing this. For myself, personally, I can't do it. I, I sprained my ankle too many times in my, in my life for me to be able to do this. I can't actually make my leg uh, horizontal under myself. Right? So, however you want to sit, you can sit. So, you can just put your both feet behind you. You can just uh, do it that way right? if you want to. So, for example, but it's not sunnah, I'm just in black. So, if someone sits like this, it's the bottom, and then their feet comes out, it extends behind them. Can? It's possible. Right? Because the whole, what is wajib is sitting. Sitting is wajib. That is, that is wajib. How you sit, that is sunnah. Right? Of course, it's iftirash. Um, uh, tawarru. Tawarru is at your, tawarru happens when you do your atahya. So, if your atahya, right, tawarru is like this. Instead of like this, now tawarru, the bum goes down to the ground. Let me see the ground. The bum is on the ground, right? This foot, this foot, this foot over here, it is extended behind beside you, and the other foot goes over it. And right, you see people do it, right? This tawarru, right? The first foot is not under the bum. The bum is on the ground. The foot is to the side. Right? It extends to the side, and you do tawarru. Right? And that is that is um that is uh the last atahya sitting. But if you can't do any of this, you can do this. And mashallah, if a person is having, having difficulty doing this because of a sprained ankle or whatever, they can do this, they can do this, right? However, it's easy for them as long as their bottom is rested. That is the, that is the definition of sitting. Your bottom is rested. Okay, number 12, remaining motionless for a moment where when sitting, right? So, sitting between two sajjahs, two sajjahs in the sitting between two sajjahs are all the arkan of prayer. Okay, so here in every rakaat, right, in every rakaat, you intend nothing but sitting in, in, in by one's movement. So basically, every movement of the prayer, that's what you have to intend. And right? you have to think of doing that and not because of any other reason. Alright? Okay, to recite tashahud at the end of the prayer, okay, uh, to say, Attahiyatu Mubarakatu, Attahiyatu Mubarakatu, Shalawatu Tayyibatu Lillah, Assalamu alayka, Ayyuhan Nabi, Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. Okay, to sit throughout the tashahud is wajib. So you can't be moving in your in your prayer. You can't be like, 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 like coming up from sujud and you begin attahiyatul mubarakatul salawat. You're still moving. You have to be seated first, then you begin attahiyatul mubarakatul salawat. Right, to the view, to, 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 um, uh, in, in your, in your, in your recitation. And then salawat and rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, giving salams. Giving salam saying assalamu alaikum that is wajib. Eh? Alright, so and I think in later on in the book they will give the minimum, right, the minimum of all of them. So I'll not do it now, right? Later on I'll go I'll go into it. Okay. So but just just to say it lah, eh, uh, just in case it's, it's not later on. I think it's later on. Right. So the tashahu at the end of the prayer, the minimum, right, minimum is to say the minimum is to say at tahya. At-tahiyatu lillah. At-tahiyatu lillah. Okay, that is minimum. So all the other things that you say, At-tahiyatu al-mubarakatu al-salawatu al-tayyibatu lillah. All of that is sunnah. Of course, you memorize everything lah. Right? But if there's someone is new to Islam, and they're having very, a lot of difficulty memorizing a lot of things, then you tell them, At-tahiyatu lillah. That is compulsory wajib. At-tahiyatu lillah wajib. And then, Assalamu alayka is wajib. Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. Ayyuhan nabi. Ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alayna
wa ala ibadillahi salihin ibadillahi salihin okay so it's all wajib right and you all know it like you all know it right so so it's assalamu alaikum wajib ayuha nabi wajib wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wajib Assalamu alayna wajib wa ala ibadillahi salihin wajib it will come later on so you don't have to write it down it will come later on eh? you don't have to write it down um and ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah sh- ya shahada wajib right and then salawat salawat on rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam right uh, minimum is allahumma allahumma salli ala muhammad minimum salawat is Allahumma salli ala Muhammad minimum but of course we will do surah salawat ibrahimiyah so we will say Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad kama wa, wa ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim al alamin Allahumma wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamidum majid and so we will do the entire long salawat but minimum especially for someone who's just learning and someone who's just coming to Islam just learning to say one salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad that is wajib okay and inshallah is coming later on all these words will come later on I'm just putting it here just to just to mention them all right and then salams salams what is wajib for salams so say all right you say salams so say assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum this is wajib wa rahmatullah sunnah wa barakatuhu only sunnah for janaza prayer Okay, so for most, for all prayers, wajib, assalamu alaikum, wajib, wa rahmatullah, sunnah, for all the prayers, wa barakatuh, sunnah for jenazah, prayer only. Okay, so to follow the sequence above, uh, tartib, and number seven is tartib, not to do a movement before other movements. So if you do a movement before other movements, then all the, consequ- the, 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 the following movements will all not be sah, it's all not valid. Right, so if you stand up after doing the first sujud and you forgot to sit and do the second sujud, then then the moment you remember, you must go back to your sitting sitting position because everything must be done in tartib. Okay, make sure you understand that. Right, and in the prayer salam, so someone who is not a masbuk, make sure you all know, and they come to a jama'ah, may sit as long as he wishes after the imam's uh, salam to supplicate. And then he can finish his own salam whenever he wishes. Okay, this part he's saying this because it is uh, for the makmum, right? You should follow the imam immediately after the imam, except for salams. Right? For salams, you're allowed to stay in position and dua how long and dua, and then salam much after the imam is possible. Whereas for other parts of the prayer, it's sunnah for you to follow the imam immediately after the imam has finished the action. So if the imam is doing sujud. And the imam says, Allahu Akbar, and he's going to sujud. So once the imam's forehead hit the ground, it's sunnah for you to immediately follow right, the imam and not to lengthen whatever you are doing that is sunnah. If you're doing a wajib, like for example, fatiha, then you must finish your fatiha. Right, but if you're doing a sunnah, you don't. You stop your sunnah and you follow the imam. Right? So sometimes people do mistake this. And that, you know, in some prayers, there are people who prolong their sujud. The Imam already Allahu Akbar and he got into, into his sitting sitting position right, already. Right. So from sujud he got up into his sitting position. Right. The the people they tend to hold the sujud for a long time. Even after the Imam already salam, they're still in sujud. That is makru. If you want to prolong your sujud, do it in your sunnah prayers. Don't do it in the wajib prayer. Right, wajib prayer, what is better for you is to follow the Imam right after the Imam. That is sunnah for you to do. It is better for you than to prolong something um, and the imam has already finished at right, doing it. Okay? Right. However, for salam, is the only time where you can prolong after the imam has uh, done it. Okay, note. Description of the prayer, sunnah before, commands, com- before commencing the prayer, to stand for the prayer after the completion of the iqama, right, to be in the first row. Uh, so, so, so here, the first thing is that after the iqama, straight after the iqama, it is sunnah for you to stand straight away. Right, so don't waste time. Don't stand during the iqamah. But right after the iqamah, stand up and pray. That is sunnah. Right, so don't waste time uh, doing something else before standing for the iqamah. So once you do the iqamah, get ready and stand. 
to be the first rule of the prayer right, is sunnah because the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends more right, uh, uh, on the imam and those who are around the imam in the first rule to make the rules straight because Rasul said in a hadith right, you better straighten your rules otherwise Allah will cause discord between your hearts and right, you begin to argue and different and, and differ and have discord and, 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 and have, have unhappiness between yourselves be, when your rules are not straight in your prayer right, so what is the meaning of a straight rule a straight row, the meaning of a straight row is like this. It is it is by your heels. I see some people are standing in prayer, for example, it's the line of the staff, right? The staff. Okay, it's not by the middle of your feet, not no nor your toes, but it's by your heels. So when you want stand if you want to stand in a staff, everybody is to stand with their heel on the line. Okay, your heels on the line. So everybody, no matter how long your feet are, how short your feet are. Right, your heel is on the so the small feet. Right, the heel is on the line. Right, the mistake that people do in our society is that they tend to stand on the line. Right, they stand on the line, uh, not on the line, but your, your heel is your heel is at the line. Right, that is the um, the sunnah, the sunnah. Okay, especially for the imam when he should enjoy the for the jamaah to do so and fill up the first row and the second and so on. Right, so the imam should the imam should remind the jamaah keep your row straight. Fill up the rows, any gaps, shoulder to shoulder, be as close as possible. And when I was saying the Zahra, they actually will go l- down the row and they will move people. Let's say they will move people to make them tight, close to each other. You don't have gaps between each other. And mashallah, in our society, sometimes people, when they come to pray, they place their back next to them. When you put your back next to you, how are you going to have a, have a tight row? Put your back in front of you or right in front of you. In, in the sense that by you put it at a place where when you sujo it, it is between your hands and your, and your knees. You can put your back there. If you don't want to put your back all the way in front, you can put your back there. So you should, so you should over your back. Right? But don't put your back next to you. Right? That is very, very macro and that will cause for uh, disunity amongst the Muslims. Okay. Commencing the prayer, one starts to make tawbatul ihram with the intention right, in the heart. It is mustahab, meaning it is encouraged to recite dua iftitah after the takbir. Right, dua iftitah is only sunnah if you have not done anything before doing dua iftitah. It's only sunnah in that case. So, for example, you say Allahu Akbar. We mentioned your, your niat is in the Allahu Akbar, right? Your niat happens there. Okay, after you do Allahu Akbar and, and you fold your hands in front of yourself, you begin Allahu Akbar kabira wa alhamdulillah kabira wa subhanallah bukrata wa asila. Right, you do that in your in in, a, uh, in your prayer. If you begin by saying "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim," or if you begin by saying "Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim," the moment you have done something else that is not dua iftitah, there is no more sunnah for dua iftitah. There is no more sunnah. Right, so the, the sunnah is only if it's the first thing you do after takbir. So it's mustahab is recommend it's not misrecommended to recite dua iftitah after. Takbutu ihram immediately. So after the iftitah, it is mustahab again sunnah. All the word mustahab here means sunnah right, or preferred to recite ta'awud. Right, ta'awud means a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Okay, put in the meaning set. If you're not so sure what they mean, put in the meaning set. Ta'awud means a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Ta'awud is mustahab. So again, mustahab means recommended. Recommended or sunnah. In every rakaat, and more emphasized in the first rakaat, it's more akada, it's not more akada in the first rakaat, but it's sunnah in every single rakaat. As opposed to dua iftitah, dua iftitah is only sunnah in the first rakaat. Okay, dua iftitah is only sunnah in the first rakaat. The awus is in every rakaat and highly sunnah or highly emphasized in the first. When a person recites surah Fatiha. Like in every, then the person surah Fatiha in every rakaat and basmala in is one of the uh, one of the ayat of surah Fatiha. So saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim is wajib to do in surah Fatiha. One says Amin at the end of surah Fatiha when following the Imam. The Imam says Amin. You say Amin because the the Amin the the angels say Amin when the Imam says Amin. So whose Amin coincides with the angels? Right then, uh, if your Amin coincides with the angels. Right, then uh, uh, your sins will be forgiven. Uh, inshallah. So the hadith goes, when the imam says Amin, you say Amin. For the angels say Amin. And whoever's Amin coincides with the angels, 
their sins will be forgiven. Suleiman goes, Walau Amin. Okay, so now everybody together, Amin, all together. Alright, so if you coincide with the angels, your sins are forgiven. Alright, so the Amin and Al Fatiha together with the Imam. Right, when following an Imam, his Amin when he does. So it's not after the Imam, but when the Imam does the Amin, you do the Amin together with the Imam. Right, and you do the Amin again together again when you do your own Fatiha. So the Fatiha of the Imam. Right, you say Amin, and your own Fatiha, you say Amin as well. It is Sunnah to say Amin. It's not part of Fatiha. Okay. Right, it's Sunnah to say Amin. It's not part of Fatiha. If one of the Imam, if, if one is the Imam or praying alone, it is Mustahab. You know, it is recommended in the first rakaat and second rakaat only to recite a one complete surah, even if it be short after Fatiha. It is recommended to recite the Quran in Tartil. Tartil meaning in a distinct and pleasant way. It means to, 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 to give the verses its rights and observe the rules of Tajweed. Right? It's recommended to do so. So when so it's sunnah to read a full surah after Fatiha. So if someone wants to read a, sh- a, a long surah, for example, eh, they want to read part of Surah Baqarah. Right? It's sunnah after you read part of Surah Baqarah for you to recite Surah Ikhlas. Because Surah Ikhlas is one full surah. Or any surah that is short, there is a full surah. Right, so for example, after I finish Fatiha, I go Alif Lam Mim. Zalik al Kitab la Ra'ib fi Hudal lil Muttaqin. And I continue. But I don't read the entire Surah Baqarah. I read only the first five ayats of Surah Baqarah. Is that a full Surah? No, it's not a full Surah. Have I gotten the Sunnah of reading a full Surah? No, I have not gotten the Sunnah of reading a full Surah. Even if I, even if I read. A hundred ayat in Surah Baqarah is still not one complete surah. It's part of a surah. So what do I have to do now? Sunnah, eh? sunnah. What should I do now? Follow the sunnah. I stop my machine. Wait, 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 I stop. I stop. Then I will say, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Okay, I will do surah ikhlas completely right, from start to end. Then I get the sunnah of reading a full surah in every rakaat. Right. So it is, it is sunnah to recite the Quran well. So you don't go, Allah, 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 and it's very, very fast. Allah, 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 Allah. Uh, don't do that. Do like this. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. Okay, clear recitation of the Quran with tajweed. Uh, that is mustahab for you to do. No matter why it's not wajib, because to read the surah itself is not wajib. Uh, it's wajib for the Fatiha. Uh, but it's not wajib to read Surah in itself. It's Sunnah. And to do it well, is Sunnah as well. Uh, to reflect upon the meaning and the lessons of the, of the Surah. So whatever Surah you are reciting, to reflect on it. Like for example, you recite Surah Zalzala. Okay. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضِ زُلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضِ أَثْقَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا right, So you, you reflect oh, on the day whereby the whole earth will be, will be shaking and showing out its contents. And the earth will testify against the human beings. Right? So you reflect on, this, on the meaning of the surahs. This is why it's recommended that you hafal, you memorize the meanings of short surahs that you usually recite in the, in the Quran, in the, your prayer. Right? So surah ikhlas, memorize what it means. Surah falak, surah nas, memorize what it means. Surah asr, right? surah nasr, right? surah iza jaa, nasrullahi wal fath. Memorize what they mean and the lessons. Right? The, if, you, if, you read, uh, if you're going to read uh, surahs, it's a sunnah for you to ensure the surah of the first rakaat is longer than the surah of the second rakaat. Right? It's sunnah for you to ensure that, right, that the surah of the first rakaat is longer than the second rakaat. If one makes ruku right, or bows from the waist, the best way is to raise your hands. So before you want to ruku, you go, Allahu Akbar, and you go into ruku. So that a person begins to raise his hands as he starts his takbir. And when the hands are at shoulder level, he bows, right? So, so there's, there's always zikir throughout your prayer. So you, so you, you, you go, oh, so after you finish your, your, your surah, right? You finish, for example, uh, surah ikhlas, right? Walam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad. So not to pause. And you go, Allah. And as, you, as, as your hands go down, you start to move down, right? Uh, Allah Akbar. And your hands rest on your uh, knees. Okay, so so uh, the best way sunnah eh, is that one will raise his hands and say Allahu Akbar. So that when he begins to raise his hands, he begins to start to takbir 
and when his hands and shoulder level he bows right uh, and then he's it is mustahab or sunnah to prolong the words of the takbir and again you can only pro- prolong it at the word Allah you cannot prolong it at anywhere else you can't say Allah nor you can say Allahu nor you can say Allahu Akbar and you can't do that and you have to go the only place where you can elongate as you mentioned earlier before the only place where you can elongate is the um, the word Allah Right, so you can only elongate there and it's highlighted, right? So only here at the A of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Uh, that's the only place you can elongate. Okay. Um. Then one makes adida and he straightens up. The best way to do so is to raise the hand, lifting them from the knees as one starts to straighten up. So from 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 ruko to stand up, basically, Sami Allah. So your hand move as you move. Asami Allahu liman hamida. I as you stand up from your uh, ruku. Okay. Uh, and then you raise your hands to show level as sunnah. Right. And then uh, as you say, Asami Allahu liman hamida. Then when you are straightened up, you say Rabbana lakal hamd. Right? Or you can say Rabbana walakal hamd. Both are correct. Both are correct. You can say Rabbana lakal hamd. Rabbana walakal hamd They are both correct Then you sujud uh, You make sajda You sujud all the way down Again you, you, you lift you, Again you say Allahu Akbar And you go down The best way to say Allah To say Allahu Akbar Is to put the knees down first Then the hands Then the forehead And the nose Basically in order Right So if someone is Is praying Let me just draw it out for you if someone is praying like this, okay, and the hands are here, she's doing takbir, eh? okay, her knees are here, her palms are here, and her forehead is here. So as she goes down, as she goes down, it's sunnah, knees first, then palms, then forehead, sunnah, in this order. So as she goes down, right, the knees touch first. Right, the knees touch first. And then the hands touch the ground. And lastly, right, the lastly the forehead goes down. Okay? And the knees touch, then the hands touch, then the lastly the forehead. Let me change it. Okay, the knees touch, then the hands touch, then the forehead. Okay, like that. Alright? Um, and as you get up, same thing in reverse order: forehead first, then hands second, and knees last. Uh, again in reverse order. Okay, in, in regards to how their placement on your body. Okay, so the one the ones near to the ground will go first, then hands and forehead. As you come up, forehead, hands, and then feet, and then then knees. Right, that is that is sunnah. Okay, um, right, keeping the hands uh directly under one's shoulders. With the fingers together, right? So, it, uh, as you, uh, as you sujud. So, as mentioned just now, earlier on, when you sujud, your your hands are under your shoulder. Keep your fingers together. Point the fingers towards the qibla. Uh, if you would like, if you if you would like, for all of these parts, right? You can label the sunnas, right? So, the first sunnah is right to, uh, knees down first. First sunnah, then hands. Second sunnah, right? Then forehead. Third sunnah. Then nose, fourth sunnah. Okay? Hands under shoulders, fifth sunnah. Fingers together, sixth sunnah. Right? Towards the kiblat, seventh sunnah. Okay? Hands uncovered, that means the palms of the hands are on the floor, eighth sunnah. Okay? Right? For one, for men, one hand gap between the two knees and the feet, while women all together. So for men, right, their, their knees are, so if they do the their knees are like that. Except for the men, eh? Right, then the, their feet is here. Okay, for the men. Okay, like that. For women, to keep them together. So for women in their sujud, right? For women in their sujud, let me just draw it. Let me see, this one. Okay, for women, their sujud will be like this. Okay, of course. Get together. Alright, and then your, your feet at the back. Alright, this is how you look like. Okay, in your sujud. Okay, your, your knees are together. 
keep them together. Right? Don't have a gap in your knees. Right? So for men to have a gap is uh, the ninth sunnah for men. Right? For us, for women together. Uh, for men to keep the stomach away from the thighs and just keep it as, as to, to, to have the inclined to be as much as possible. For men, the ten sunnah. Right? For women, right, to keep them together. Right? So that means for the for woman, right, her stomach is here. And the knees are here. Okay, but there is still an incline. See the slim incline. Alright. For men it is too like that the knees are here. Right, the stomach is here. Okay. So the incline is, is, is a higher incline, for example. Okay. Okay, let me just uh, clear all and then we will move on. I want to finish this, this part first, take a short break, and then we continue with our uh, Arabic. Eh? Okay, um, and then other sunnahs to say this, the tasbih. Right? So, of course, in ruku and sujud, subhana rabbi al azimi wa bihamdi for ruku, subhana rabbi al a'la wa bihamdi for sujud. And it's, it is commendable or sunnah to do ah as much as you can while you are doing sujud. Right? Then you raise your head and you sit before prostrating a second time. So you raise it and you sit, and as I mentioned, you can sit however you sit, and you can say Allahu Akbar Sunnah. All the Allahu Akbar for movement is all Sunnah, right? But the only Allahu Akbar that is wajib is the first one, Allah, the the takbir ihram. That's the first one that is, that is wajib. As one rises, your head to sit, uh, you sit in iftiraj. That's how we drew what is iftiraj, right? It's sunnah to do to, in, to sit in iftiraj. So I hope you you, you, you continue to, to count the Sunnahs, eh? To number the Sunnahs, right? So iftiraj is Sunnah. You should place the left foot on the side. And to sit on it while keeping the right foot on the bottom of the holes uh, of the toes heel up and means to prop up to prop up the uh, right foot to so place both one's hands on the thighs near your knees right so where do you put your hands right if your thighs are here right in your in your sit down after right let me just sit down after, after sujud okay your hands are right here okay close to your knees Right, so not mid thigh, right, nor near to your waist, no. But it is your fingers are right at the edge of your knees. Sunnah. All sunnah right, for us to do. So many sunnahs in the prayer, right? MashaAllah. There are more than a thousand sunnahs in salat. More than one thousand sunnahs in salat. Right. So it um and then held together, fingers extended, like this, extended, right? And then you place your fingers, uh you place place your fingers together like this. Right, and you recite the dua Rabbi Ghfirli Warhamni Wajiburni Warfani Warzukni Wahdini Waafini Waafani It is not sunnah to prolong the sitting between the sujuds. It should be quick. Right? It should be just do enough for the duas from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This dua here Rabbi Ghfirli Warhamni Wajiburni Warfani Warzukni Wahdini Waafini Waafani And then sujud. Because the sitting down between the sujuds is a, a short rukun. It's not a long rukun. If one, then you you then you sujud again just bef- just as before. After this one, you raise your head and say Allahu Akbar as the first raises it, prolonging the takbir until you are standing upright. Right. So as you move and you stand up back after you you after you sujud, right, you say Allahu Akbar until you stand up. And it's sunnah here, and in each rakat it is not followed by tashahud to briefly rest in iftirash style of sitting before rising. So basically, if you're on your first and third rakaat, whereby you're going to stand back up, it's sunnah for you to sit for a while and then stand. That is sunnah. Right? So and what, what, how should you sit? Sit iftirash. Right? Whereby how, how your, your feet is, ne- is below your uh, bum. Right? So when, one, when you ri- rise up, support your, yourself with your hands, palms down, and prolong your takbir in standing. This is called jilsat istiraha. It is not done after sujud tilawa. Right, so if you, so as as you get up, you are to you you are allowed to or you, you should support yourself with your hands to get up into standing. Right, so you don't have to use your, uh, the thigh muscles to get up. Eh, mashallah. Right, this this um sitting down that is that is uh that is that is rest. Right, to sit down for for rest. It is done after every sujud except after sujud tilawa. So when you are rest- sujud tilawa means sujud of recitation. So when you are reciting the Quran, you come to a verse of sujud. You go down into sujud, and when you get up from that sujud, there is no sunnah of you sitting down before you get up. And you get up from sujud straight away into standing. Let's see, should I say a lot more or not? Okay. Uh, let's see, let's a bit more. Let me see. Eh? Okay, I will. Okay. 
okay, I will stop. I'll finish the page lah, inshallah. I'll finish the page that we can, you know, exactly where we stop. So we're on, we'll be on page 50, inshallah. Alright. If one performs the second rakaat of the prayer, just like the first, except for the initial niyat, the time of the ihram and the dua kita. So the, the, your second rakaat will be the same thing as the first, except we have no niyat anymore, because it already happened in the first takbir. And there is no takbir ihram and there is no dua kita. If the prayer is more than two rakaats, you sit in iftirash after the first two rakaats and read the shahud and salawat unto Rasulullah but not his family. Say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad and then stand. Like she's done in the final tashahud where you say, wa ala ali Muhammad for, 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 for the first, the second rakaat, the first, the first tashahud, you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad and you're done. Right, then one rises saying, Allahu Akbar and supported in one on his hands as before. When standing, one rises, uh, one raises hands to show the which one does here, but not after rising from the first or third rakaat. So when you rise from second rakaat, tahya, uh, it's sunnah for you to raise your hands to your shoulder level as you rise up from a tahya to standing. It's not sunnah to do so for uh second for the first and the third rakaat. Break it down, eh? Right. So just to make it clear. Right. So it is sunnah to raise hands right, from the shahud. Right, from the first the shahud. So which means second again. Okay, second again. Right, raise hands to the shoulder. Right, for second again. Not for first and not for third. Right? Because this is for the third you come from for the third you come from uh sujud. You know, coming from tahiyah. So it's only sunnah to raise your hands because when you go, Allahu Akbar, the raise rakaat, it's only sunnah when you're from the second rakaat. Like going to the, uh, going to the, to the third rakaat. Then goes on to perform the remainder of the prayer as he did in the, in the second rakaat, except that he recites Fatiha to himself and does not recite a surah afterwards. There is no sunnah of reciting a surah after Fatiha for third and fourth rakaat. Only first and second is the sunnah to recite a surah after Fatiha. If one sits at the end of the, pra- the, the prayer for last shahud in tawarru style of sitting with one left uh, posterior, means his, his b- bottom and his bum, on the ground and the left foot to the side, emerging from the, from the right side, and the right foot is vertical, propped up. As I drew it just now for you all. Uh, in the two the shahud, the, the left hand rests on the li- left thigh, near the knee, and the finger extended and held together. The right hand is similarly placed, uh, but held close with thumb touching the side of the index finger which alone is left to extend. Right, one uh, raises the index finger and points when, it, when one says La illa Allah. Right, so for tashahud, right, for tashahud, your left hand, so it's your, it's your thighs, right, your left hand is straightened, right, and then your thumb is here. Okay, this is your left hand. Okay, your right hand, your right hand, you can hold it already in a cl- in, in, in a clenched fist with one finger down and your thumb here. Okay, you can hold it already in a clenched fist. Alright, so when you say Ashadu Allah, so you hold it like this. Like this. Okay, hold it like this. So when you say Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Okay, it's not a straight up, right, but it's just a illallah. It's, it's still curved, you can see it's still curved. Right, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Uh, just, just a bit of a lift uh, up for the tashahud. Okay, alhamdulillah. Alright, so we're going to stop here for today, inshallah. And then the next lesson, we will continue from closing the prayer. Okay, quite a lot. Uh. Actually, a bit. Can we finish it? <laughs> so the next chat session, we can begin from the intentions. Okay, just let me just read this through, eh? <laughs> inshallah. Okay, um, let's, this is my next, this next prayer is my period, right? <laughs> okay, so here it says, closing the prayer. Then one says the final salam, saying Assalamu alaikum. That is that is wajib. Wa rahmatullah sunnah. Right, so you highlight, right, wajib. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullah sunnah. Okay? Right, uh, and to turn the head or to the right to show the right cheek to those behind you, right, and then to the left. Right, so, wa rah- so you say Assalamu alaikum. Your face, your face is towards the Qibla. Sunnah, eh, sunnah. Your face is with the Qibla when you say Assalamu Alaikum. When you say Wa Rahmatullah, it's sunnah for your face to turn to the right first. So you go, 
Assalamualaikum And you turn your face all the way Warahmatullah All the way eh? I can't turn my head Because I have a pin down here right now right, But 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 by right You should turn your face 90 degrees to the other side Okay and you come back Assalamualaikum Warahmatullah That side Okay um, If you, you, There is no sunnah of nodding And not Some people they nod Then they turn Then they nod Then they turn There's no sunnah of nodding I just know of Assalamualaikum and you turn your head, turn your head like that side, right? And to point your cheek can be seen by the people behind you. Okay, warah, warahmatullah, you turn. They come back, center. Assalamualaikum, you return. Warahmatullah. Okay. So one thereby intends to finish the prayer and intends to make the salam to the angels and the messenger of Allah, given origin, on the right, then turns one's head to the left and repeat the salams. Intend to do this on the left. So when you say Assalamualaikum, you you niyat. It's a sunnah, eh? sunnah, to niyat that you're going to give salams to all those on your right. Human and jinn. Mm-hmm. Inshallah, no jinn are going to respond to you. <laughs> right? And then when you, and if they respond, they respond quietly. <laughs> and then when you, when you go to the, to the left, you go, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi, you intend to, to give salams to all those on your left. Right? Humans and jinn. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, and the follower may intend one of the salams to respond to the salams of the imam. So the imam is behind, beside you. The imam goes, Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. So when you turn to the imam, you say, Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. By union, you are responding to the imam. The imam's uh, salams. Okay. Right. It is sunnah to zikir silently after the prayer. Uh, imam Shafi'i mentioned in, in al- 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 Al-Um, I prefer the imam and follow me zikir after salams. And do so silently. Unless the imam wants to be learned from or he's teaching the people. In which case, he says the zikr out loud until he believes that the, that the jama'ah has learned from him. Then he should do it silently. So basically, the original thing is that zikr after salat is to be silent. That's the original ruling. But because of, of ignorance in the society, they don't know what to, what to zikr after salat, the imam does it out loud right, for people to follow and they know what to do after salat. The imam turns for zikr and dua to his right side the jama'ah and left towards the Qibla right, he leaves his place as soon as he finishes if there are no women in which case he waits for them to leave right, it is mustahab for the followers to remain seated until the imam stands right, so after the imam has finished praying and you, you might have seen this before you know, in, in some masjids right, so the, the, the staff is here this is the men right, they're, pray, they're all praying here the imam is praying here right? so it's soon for the imam after he prays to, 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 to turn 90 degrees Right, so now when he's praying, his his back is towards the people, right? His bum is towards the people, his back is towards the people. Right, so when after he has finished, he still the imam, he's here and he's so cool. For example, eh? and he's praying this way, okay, towards the kiblat. After he's finished praying, it is sunnah for him now to turn, right, and have his cheek towards the people, and his his thighs will be this way. So now, how is it going to be? Let me just undo this one. So now he's going to be like this. Okay, he's going to do his dua like this. So he's not going to show his back to the people. Right, but he's going to do his dua in this way. Right, so sideways. Sideways. So his right is towards the uh, people, his left is towards the Qibla. His right is towards the people, left is towards the Qibla. Unless he knows um, that there are elderly behind him on this side. If on this side there's some elderly, and here they are all youngsters, then he turns the other way. And he faces the elderly. Our respect for the elderly. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, I hope that one is clear. Let me just check the chat. Um, okay. The chat. Okay, about the mushaf. Okay, if you hold the mushaf like this, right? If this is your, you get a mushaf. Oh, yeah. If you get a mushaf like this, right? So you're holding the mushaf, and you open the mushaf. You're reading the prayer, right? So you want to go down to sujud, okay? Your it's wajib for any part of your palm to touch the ground, any part, right? So if you want to hold it, you can't sujud with the back of your hand. Ah, uh, you can't do that. You can't do the back of your hand. So how are you gonna do this? You're gonna sujud. You can't put the mushaf on the floor. It's a mushaf. You can't put it on the floor, right? So what you can do is you can hold it like this, up with your fingers, and then so make sure it's a small mushaf. And put your fingers on the floor like that. Uh, but better, you have a table next to you. Put it on the table. 
and he goes to property they will even get up and pick it up again right for a sunnah to drink sujood why is this is is the sunnah to put your knees hands forehead in order separated from different sunnahs one for each part is it is it what so one no because okay is it is so one movement in one order okay no because when you when you when you sujood you actually do it in parts right and you don't like 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 fall to the ground do you like boom, to the ground and you actually go like like you were standing you're going in parts so your your knees your hands your forehead you don't go like boom the whole thing to the ground right even when you get up also you go your forehead hands and knees it's possible for someone to sujood with their hands first then their knees then their forehead and right? that's what some people will do because they're unable to hold their weight right that is okay so it's not, it's not um it's you said the sunnah to that but if they are physically unable then it's okay and right? so so some people they did from from a standing they bend all the way down their hands outstretched have you seen that the hands outstretched they 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 support their weight then their knees come down and then their forehead right they're unable to do knees first before hands they do hands and then knees same thing with people who are unable to stand with just their thigh muscles right they need they need to like a push of themselves off of the ground so in that case they can sit first and then they push themselves up okay as a woman in jamaa the imam should be facing a front during the doa uh yes right because of the situation last time or not as in other societies whereby the women uh they their face is out right right so in like, in yemen like in yemen if i pray behind a jamaa and like an imam is the is a man is an imam and the man is not my mahram when i pray i remove my niqab right because you have to show your face right i mean your your your, your forehead i remove my niqab right so the imam sunnah on the imam not to turn around until the women have covered up like their faces right, or they have moved off for the imam not to see the woman or look at the woman of course if it's a family situation then family no problem right for, because it's all mahram Nah, so it's about mahram or non mahram. Okay, alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm gonna stop here for the for the.